Fantasy worlds are always super captivating to see in movies. Nowadays, films blow a huge part of their budget on making sure the magical worlds they're showing look as fantastical as possible, and so viewers are often left wishing they could step right through their screens and see them in real life. In today's video, we'll share with you eight of the best fantasy worlds and magical realms in movies. So let's dive right in. Starting off at number eight, it's 2003's Big Fish. Tim Burton's unique style is seen permeating all the fantastical worlds he's introduced across his many films. But one that has managed to have a lingering effect on audiences, even after almost two decades, is 2003's Big Fish. The film is definitely from his usual directorial style, and instead of featuring the usual gothic animation, it's actually a live action project. It features a bright and colorful setting, which is a huge contrast to the usually dark and dreary atmosphere found in most of his other works. The main plot of the movie is about a man who's on his deathbed. Despite the somber premise, though, the film is quite uplifting and has a nice amount of comedy, too. The fantasy world we get to see in the movie serves as a great way to dive into the main character and the various complexities that are present in his relationship with his son, Will. As his father continues to dive deeper and deeper into his fantastical delusion, Will can't help but listen to what he has to say, and we can't help but think the world he's described in the movie is definitely one that we'd like to visit one day. Hopefully we can do so without having to be in our own deathbeds. At number seven, it's Midnight in Paris. The magical world at Midnight in Paris is different from some of the other ones you'll see on this list. It doesn't have anything to do with magic portals or secret keys. Instead, it exists because of the main character's ability to travel back in time. The time-traveling romance drama stars Owen Wilson in a story that will probably feel very nostalgic to anyone who's lived through that time period. Owen plays the role of Gil Pender, a hopeless romantic that has become increasingly frustrated with how pointless it is to chase after the Hollywood lifestyle. He wants to go back in time and live out in the glory days of the 1920s, and that's exactly what ends up happening in the movie. Throughout the movie, he gets to meet with some of his idols of that age while listening to the greatest hits jazz has to offer. He witnesses the creation of revolutionary art and lives out a charming social life with a beautiful woman too. It's a really charming and exciting idea if you can set aside the thought that World War II is going to arrive in about a decade's worth of time. Next at number six, The Wizard of Oz. Sometimes tornadoes that literally fling you from one world to another aren't all that bad. 1939's The Wizard of Oz takes us on a magical journey filled with talking scarecrows, wicked witches, and munchkins. The magical world featured in the movie is definitely among the classics. The movie movie made cinematic history for being one of the first early films to be shot in Technicolor. Plus, it's just a really fun movie to sit together and watch with family every holiday season. Though despite how pretty and magical things might appear on screen, the production seems to be the complete opposite. It apparently went through several directors who endured hellish 16-hour shifts, and things weren't too great for the cast either. For our number five spot, we've got 2009's Coraline. Taking a page out of Tim Burton's book of gothic stop-motion animation, Henry Selleck takes us on an intriguing, if not slightly familiar journey journey with his movie Coraline. The film centers around Coraline Jones, who feels like she's been ignored by her parents, who are constantly working. While exploring her pink palace apartment one rainy day, she discovers a hidden doorway that leads her into a completely different universe. There she finds a version of her parents that actually loves her and gives her all the attention she could want. There's just one problem though. The other mother has weird buttons for eyes. And when Coraline refuses the suggestion to have her eyes changed into these button things, the happy-go-lucky universe starts turning into a nightmare. We're not exactly sure if we'd like to visit it, but the way it's portrayed in the movie definitely goes to show just how amazing of a director Selleck is. Moving on to our number four spot, it's The Chronicles of Narnia. The Chronicles of Narnia is a three-part movie franchise based on the acclaimed children's book by C.S. Lewis. It all began with The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, which began the massive adventure which would have the Pevensey siblings roaming around the wonderfully alluring world of Narnia. Lucy makes her way into Narnia while playing hide-and-seek in a huge oak wardrobe. Later, her siblings follow her lead and eventually go through the wardrobe too. Narnia Narnia is about as fantastical a fantasy world can get. There's a half-man, half-fawn character, there are witches who've cursed the land and brought about an eternal winter, and of course we can't forget all the talking beavers and Aslan, the talking lion. The four siblings might not be native to this land, but they're determined to go around and restore summer to it again. The classic tale has just about everything we love to see in a fantasy story, much like this one. It's no wonder why it's such a fan favorite. At number three, we've got Labyrinth. 1986's Labyrinth features a fantasy world that's definitely got our attention, and no, it's not because it's so amazing that we want to live there permanently, the complete opposite, exactly. The movie showcases a world that feels more like a nightmare than an actual dream. The whole movie has a unique flair to it, and if you need any proof of that, look no further than the fact that it starts with the late David Bowie in it. The film revolves around Sarah Williams, a 16-year-old who has to find her way outside of this mysterious maze she's trapped in. And on her way, 
day, she also has to rescue her brother from the infamous Goblin King. The movie didn't really see much box office success, but it still has a huge cult fan following, many of whom love it to this day. It even received a four-volume comic sequel which went from 2006 to 2010, and so it's possible that we could get a continuation of the story sometime in the future. Plus at number two, it's Pan's Labyrinth. Just the nature of a labyrinth makes you think it's going to be a dangerous and difficult place to go to, and if the number three spot on our list didn't convince you, we think this definitely will. Guillermo del Toro's Pan's Labyrinth features a long and difficult journey, but it's not one where the main character has to physically push themselves. They've also got to work to achieve a mental and spiritual goal too. The movie uses the fantasy genre quite cleverly and discusses some seriously heavy topics like war, death, and trauma. We get to see an underworld that's filled with dangerously scary creatures. There are some amazing metaphors and themes on display here for viewers who'd like to go the extra mile and really try to figure this movie out. Finally, our number one spot goes to Harry Potter. Even after all these years, we can't help but feel like no movie has come close to taking us on a magical journey quite like Harry Potter did. This is because the movie doesn't really take you to an alternate world, but rather it paints a fantasy landscape that exists with our very own. This somehow works to make it feel all the more realistic and exciting. We're sure, as kids, we all waited for the day we could get our letter from Hogwarts. Harry Potter features magic and spells, wizards and witches, and a bunch of other fantastical creatures and elements that make you fall in love with its iconic world. Plus, we get to see it all play out from Harry's perspective, which helps to ground the world for us because we learn about everything alongside Harry. Throughout the eight-movie-long saga, Harry must improve his skills as a wizard and take down the evil Lord Voldemort. It's safe to say many of us grew up watching the film franchise. Plus, if you read all of J.K. Rowling's books back in the 90s, you might have an even closer connection to the story than most people. Ultimately, it offers a level of coziness, mixed in with the excitement of discovering something new. It's a tale that almost every kid can relate to at some level, which is probably why the series has managed to remain so popular after all this time. We're about to get an open-world game called Hogwarts Legacy soon, so it'll be fun to explore everything that Hogwarts has to offer once more. That's a wrap for this video. Which of these fantasy and magical worlds do you want to visit the most? Comment below, give this video a thumbs up, and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.